Greetings and welcome to another edition of Montpelier Connection. I'm State Representative Mike Merwicki from the Wyndham Ford District of Putney, Dummerston, Westminster. Uh, the legislature has concluded for this year. It's summertime here and, and we're trying to get legislators uh, from Wyndham County to come in and talk about the work that they've done, the bigger picture. And today's guest is Representative Emily Kornheiser from the Wyndham... Two one. Two, two, one. two one. So what is your district? My district, Mike, is what is considered West Brattleboro, which is not a separate township. It's part of Brattleboro, but it's the western part of Brattleboro, yeah. and a little stretch of Canal Street that most people think of as Guilford, okay. which is actually in Brattleboro. All right. Yes. So There's about eight people on that part. <laughs> it's uh, something that we all have different maybe uh, considerations of what our district is, and it's not always clear, so that's why mm -hmm. I try and, especially in Brattleboro, so yes. people know you're my representative. Mm -hmm. uh, I felt like we had a very productive first year of the biennium. Uh, it's your first uh, session. Uh, just as a general overview, what were some of your uh, thoughts before and how did they come to come to fruition in the legislature? Mm. Did, the, did the thoughts match up with the reality? The thoughts matched up with the reality fairly well. I think it's because all of you in the delegation, you know, took the time to have relationships with me before I started. And so I really felt like I went in with a realistic sense of what was possible in a first year. Um, things that really stuck with me and what was important to me while I was there is how important patience is. Um, and process. And process, yes. Process, ceremony, pomp, circumstance. Um, and that so much of decisions is made on these really like slow trajectories of reframing problems. Mm -hmm. And so I think a lot of the value that I brought in my first year was being able to sort of shift conversations, especially in my committee. Mm -hmm. But I know that it, that's not necessarily going to pay off in a very direct, articulate way for a few years. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I enjoyed that process. So what committee were you assigned to? Um, I was on Commerce and Economic Development. Yeah. and. We are the committee that oversees some um, sort of cracks of the economy, like the insurance industry and the banking industry. Um, learned a lot about that, learned about unclaimed property. So some really thick, deep, um, geeky bills that have a lot of private sector lobbyists connected to them. And then also had some opportunity to think much more broadly about how our state workforce is supported, um, what that looks like, and how things like childcare and minimum wage intersect with that. Yeah, yeah. Now the agency that's connected to that committee is the Agency of Commerce and Community Development. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel like that's a, a wonderful way to frame the connections between uh, commerce, the economy, and community. So. Uh, how did that work in actuality? Is, is that brought to bear with when we're helping to shape the economy, we want to make sure communities, uh, we're looking at, at ground level? Mm -hmm. um, I would say it's the Agency of Commerce and then the Department of Labor has also spent quite yeah. a bit of time in my committee. Um, and they're the ones who are sort of on the ground with workers. But I think in some ways the Agency of Commerce um, while they don't have the resources to do this all the time, ideally what they're doing, what I was trying to sort of push the envelope on, is that they have the capacity to really provide the tools and the technical assistance and the best practices to communities who want to shift things on the ground. So whether that is looking at recruitment practices, we have a big statewide push to recruit more workers, um, making sure that that's really created specifically for each individual community or for employers in that community, mm -hmm. or whether that's thinking about what's the enabling environment in a community that really helps businesses thrive. Now, one of the, the statewide concerns we, we hear um, is about our population mm -hmm. um, and how that affects this generation of workers and what we hope is the next generation of workers. Who's going to be the electricians? Who's going to be plowing our snow? Mm -hmm. Who are the medical providers going to be? Because we have a, an aging workforce. We have mm -hmm. an aging population. Is that something you looked at in your committee? We probably spent about a quarter of our committee time focusing on that issue in a few different ways. Yeah. And some of that was thinking about um, 
why folks might want to move to Vermont. And um, from that perspective, I think it's the same reasons that people might want to stay in Vermont. It's a strong social safety net. It's child care that's accessible. It's housing that's healthy and safe and affordable. It's programs like family medical leave and a minimum wage that we might talk about more. Yeah. Um, and then how we support the workforce that we have here now. Some of that is we have a lot of people who are really underemployed, folks who have dropped out of the workforce. In some regions, our um, wages are so low that yeah. it's really hard to see the worth in working if you yeah. still can't pay your bills. Yeah. And so it's trying to really help people see pathways to greater success in the workforce. So we have a shortage of electricians. Um, but we don't have a shortage of people working in the service economy. And so how can we help some of those people transition from um, those sort of front of counter work, yeah. customer service work, how can we help them shift to jobs that often have some union backing mm -hmm. and have really strong wages? Yeah. So do you feel like there's a, a, a good integration of the different players that come to your committee? Um, n no, yeah. no. But um, from what I understand, it's better than it used to be. Mm -hmm. And we did a lot of work on every bill we worked on um, in our committee, whether that was strengthening the workforce development environment for folks who are exiting high school, or whether that was recruitment, or whether that was how we support businesses to train existing employees. Two things that were always really important to me, three things actually. Um, one was how are we making sure that each of the agencies working on this are really deeply collaborating, mm -hmm. both the contractors on the ground um, who might not be state agencies but might be contracted by state agencies, such as um, Brattleboro Development Credit Corporation here, um, which is the regional development credit corporation for all of Wyndham County and mm -hmm. really holds a, lot of, holds a lot of power and a lot of potential in this region given how much the Agency of Commerce invests in them make sure that agencies like that are really collaborating very deeply on the ground as well as with their state partners. And so really made sure that appropriate MOUs were in place, that there was money to staff collaboration, because a collaboration takes time. Mm -hmm. And it's often thought of as an afterthought as opposed to really an essential part of a project. And then we also um, really wanted to make sure that people were being held to clear outcomes that they understood why they were doing the work that they mm -hmm. were doing, that they were measuring it. And then yeah. we, as a legislature, were taking the time in a year or five years to say, we had this great idea, but did it actually work? Are we yeah. going to check, or are we just going to let it roll over? Yeah. And so that we had the data to actually make that case in an informed way, yeah. um, instead of with a lot of the storytelling that I think often comes to us. Mm -hmm. And then the last thing that was really important to me was every single person that came and testified in the committee about any job and any workforce shortage, I'd say, what wages are you paying? Yeah. Yeah. And often it was employers paying less than $15 an hour who were concerned that they couldn't attract people. Yeah. It's a challenge, and, and I think it connects to that bigger picture of how yeah. do we keep and attract the younger Vermonters to mm -hmm. Vermont. But some of the barriers that have come up is, is um, the lack of consistent broadband mm -hmm. and, and cell service and around the state. And we did some great work on that, yeah. and I think we're continuing to. Uh, affordable housing, mm -hmm. uh, especially from Brattleboro and, and Burlington, they're very tight. You know, Wyndham County is a very tight housing market. Mm -hmm. Chittenden County is. Um, but wages and, and, and those other pieces, and that's where I, I, I'd like to segue into looking at the, the work we did on raising the minimum wage, mm -hmm. And, and paid family leave. Mm -hmm. These are two things that uh, we hit a bump in the road at the end of the session, but a lot of good work got done. Um, why is paid family leave such an important thing? For me, and I think for many folks on my committee, um, social infrastructure like that is an essential piece of a thriving economy. So it's one, acknowledging that employees are part of families and they're part of communities and that they need to be supported and recognized as such. But it's also acknowledging that a lot of businesses are spending a lot of money on things like family medical leave or replacing people when they leave because they don't have fa family medical leave. Yeah. Um, you know, I know a lot of the folks when I was a reach up case manager that were on, um, on reach up were there because they had had to leave jobs when they were pregnant yeah. and then didn't have a job to return to. Um, and then, you know, healthcare costs. 
businesses are really businesses and individuals are spending so much money doing this in the private sector, and it would be more both financially efficient and more available for all if we were investing in that as a whole state. Yeah. And so for me, you know, things like childcare, really investing in childcare, family medical leave, all of those pieces of social infrastructure is what comes together to support businesses and families as one. Yeah. And as a nation, we don't do well with this. As mm -hmm. a state, we're trying. Um, my daughter had a baby five months ago. and, and She's very cute. I've seen the pictures. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'm tempted to hold, um, really hard not sh to show baby <laughs> pictures here, but, um, but she got three months. That's leave. great. Yeah. However, I told her my, my sister's husband has a daughter who lives in Canada. Mm. Between what she got from the government program mm -hmm. and work, 18 months. Yeah. Yeah, this is what the rest of the world is doing. We mm -hmm. are falling so far behind. It's time. And I think what's important to remember is we know that it's actually what's, it's not just what's best for, you know, people's desires, but it's actually best for children's development. There it so is. we know yeah. that it helps children's brains to be deeply attached during and deeply stable. And it helps parents be good parents to have that just yeah. really focused attachment time with each other. So we know that everyone will be actually under less stress going forward, yeah. you know, well beyond just those three months. Yeah. So, I mean, I absolutely think it's time, and I think it's very possible in Vermont. We have so many small businesses that can't scale up to that kind of benefits. Yeah. Um, so here, more than I think many other places, it makes sense to have a universal program because yeah. so many small businesses could then just buy in rather than having to build their own program. Now, what we heard from the governor is he had a different plan, and, and his plan, I believe, was to collaborate with New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. But my understanding is it's not possible because New Hampshire legislature has rejected that. Uh, so I, I'm not sure if the governor's still pushing the Vermont-New Hampshire collaboration, but it's not possible, is, is my understanding, because of what New Hampshire's done. Um, hopefully we can, we can come to a place, and when we get back in January, we can put a bill on the governor's desk that he could sign. Uh, is your sense that this is something the governor's going to support? Whew. I have... Um, I think reading the governor's tea leaves is particularly difficult. It has um, been, hasn't I won't make it? any oatmeal jokes. Yeah. But um, what I think the governor does understand is that we need a thriving economy here yeah. if we're going to make this state work, and we need to support families yeah. in order it's to make that work. part of workforce work. development. It is at, it's an essential part of workforce development. It's part of building yeah. an economy that works for everyone. Yeah. And I think we can all get behind that regardless of what political persuasion we come from. Yeah. And I think that's one of the concerns in the 2018 election nationally. Mm -hmm. uh, the talk of a booming economy didn't register because for most people who are not millionaires or corporations, the economy really is not booming. Mm -hmm. And the people that are working two and three jobs are struggling to get by and living paycheck to paycheck. So that's what I think we're talking about when we talk mm -hmm. about an economy that works for all. And uh, these are the kinds of things that people at the top don't worry about mm -hmm. having a baby, taking care of a sick parent. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's one of those pieces. Uh, raising the minimum wage is another piece that, mm -hmm. that we're, we're looking to do. Um, your thoughts on that? So the gap gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and it makes it harder and harder and harder to dig out of it, as a lot of us know. You know, yeah. most families in Vermont and certainly most families in America are, you know, inches away from a catastrophe, whether that's, you know, a busted oil furnace or, you know, one injury or whatever it is, it leaves mm -hmm. someone out of work. And we have people, we have so many people in Vermont, most of them single mothers, who That's are right. working more than 40 hours a That's week. That's a good point. The majority of people this, the minimum wage would affect, it would ri help raise up single mothers, isn't it? Yeah, which yeah. means that it would help raise up the children of our community. And you could think of that as our future workforce, or you could think of it as a deeply ethical consideration, but whichever way, we want to support those folks to do the best they can. Yeah. And when you're working 40, when you're working 60 hours a week and still have all of that stress of not being able to pay your bills, it's really hard to contribute to your community. It's really hard to parent in a calm and effective way. It's yeah. just everything is so difficult. And yeah. so for me, a $15 minimum wage is the bare minimum 
that we can do for someone who's working. It means yeah. that someone might be able to just put the puzzle pieces together. I don't even think it's talking about dinner in a movie sometimes, the way I think some of the sound bites have done that. Yeah. We need about $23 an hour to pay for an apartment here in yeah. Wyndham County. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and that goes back to our tight housing market mm -hmm. here. And so I um, think one thing, to go back to sort of the agency of commerce and community development, I think one thing that they can do is to provide technical assistance to businesses to restructure yeah. their business plans yeah. to really understand how things like wages or family leave or yeah. any of these other pieces of supporting workers can be possible within their business yeah. model. And that's would be a real value add. I have heard from some businesses that they're getting people coming over. Uh, we often hear how things are better in New Hampshire mm. because of their tax structure. But the fact is the minimum wage in New Hampshire is seven twenty five. It's mm -hmm. the it's the national. And and I think we're at ten eighty now. Mm -hmm. um, so they don't have to go far to get a three dollar bump. And it's really funny, one of the arguments that I've heard against the minimum wage is that um, it really hurts businesses along the border. But what I have seen and what I've heard from all of the businesses, yeah. as it sounds like you have, is that we're attracting workers from the other side of the border. Yeah. We're not losing business to the yeah. other side of the border. It's the, in, it, you know, it, it's the we're getting an inflow. Way. And what I do see also here in Brattleboro is that we're losing workers to Massachusetts where mm -hmm. wages are higher. Yeah. Yeah. And we don't want to do that. No. no because no what I see is that people then, you know, they might work over there and stay living here for a year or two years. But by the third year, generally, people are moving to Greenfield. Yeah. 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 Um, our priority changed a little bit from the start of the session as we watched one state after another treat women's reproductive freedom Mm -hmm. as something they want to take away from them. Mm -hmm. Georgia, Alabama, mm -hmm. um, Missouri, mm -hmm. um, Ohio, I think also. Mm -hmm. These are states that, that really pulled back on, on rights and freedoms that women have been guaranteed since 1974. Mm -hmm. uh, our strategy then was twofold, uh, to put Roe v. Wade in statute mm -hmm. and to, um, to put it in the Constitution. Mm -hmm. um, how do you see that as, as our work now and then moving forward? Uh, is this something you've been pushing for as well? And what are you hearing from people? Um, I've been really involved in women's rep in reproductive justice generally. I won't say women's reproductive justice generally um, for most of my life. Um, sort of happy to grow up in a family that very much supported that and introduced me to Planned Parenthood when I was an adolescent and yeah. have sort of gone from there. Um, what I see in this country happening, and I think was happening well before the last election, is that we're really splitting further and further. And that's not just um, you know, sort of blue states and red states and tropes. It's that we're seeing states that are really starting to rethink and deeply invest in what it means to take care of their community. And those states are passing things like family medical leave. And they're also passing um, protections to really invest in people's right to exist, mm -hmm. right? Um, and some people might think of that as sort of social justice, and some people might think of that as identity politics. But it doesn't feel like identity politics when it's your identity. It just yeah. feels like a right to live. and so. I think what we did in terms of legalizing right to an abortion and really protecting that right to an abortion was a powerful part of that picture. And I think that goes along with the ethnic studies bill. I think it goes along with a lot of other work that we did this session to say that if you're in Vermont, you're a Vermonter and mm -hmm. we will protect you and we will honor you and we will we'll be here with you. And there's economic pieces of that and there's social pieces of it, but it's all one package of saying we're a state that invests in its people and believes in its people and trusts yeah. in its people. That we're, we're not ready to move back on that, mm -mm. whereas yeah. many other states are. Mm -hmm. My guess is it's going to be one of the big issues in the next campaign. And it's important, I think, for Vermont to have some leadership here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm really proud of the work we did. And I yeah. think we were it was inspiring to see how much our caucus of Democrats could have really come together around this yeah. issue and work through discomforts and work through um, 
you know, talking through something that's a difficult conversation to talk through yeah. and really come out on the other side of saying yeah. we believe. And I look forward to doing that on a whole bunch of other issues. Yeah. And the, the vote was such a strong vote in the House. It mm -hmm. wasn't just Democrats. And there was a lot of Republicans mm -hmm. who, who see this for a lot of reasons yeah. that it's an important thing to do. And mm -hmm. um, there was an interview I just saw with Melinda Gates mm -hmm. for who, who has been helping just to get birth control in, in many countries in Africa mm -hmm. and, and, and in Asia. And she said in one generation you can turn a country's culture around mm -hmm. if women have access to, to, to birth control. Mm -hmm. And that's a bigger part of this conversation as well because there are states where it's not just that they're trying to take uh, the right to an abortion away, but, but they're limiting actual access to health services, to, to birth control, and, and, and we know that this is, this is a key for, for family planning. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an environmental issue because uh, keeping a sustainable growth population is, is an important piece of having a, a planet that's sustainable. What is really important to me when we talk about the abortion debate or we talked about any of these reproductive rights is that we often um, politically talk about these extreme situations, you know, we talk about in situations of rape or incest and that's, you know, that's why we're standing in the trenches or on the battle lines or whatever phrase we want to use. But that this needs to be part of just like basic health care so that women can yeah. contribute in the community and the economy to the yeah. best of their abilities. And without this, it's not possible. Yeah. And so for me, that's why I step up. It's not these extreme situations. The extreme situations are going to happen no matter what, and they're going to, you know, the world is, you know, the world is what the world is. Yeah. But when we make policy based on that, um, yeah, yeah, and and we had a lot of good discussion. Mm -hmm. You know, the realities of of what is, mm -hmm. and and the situations that people who are opposed to this try and um, lift up as as something normal and regular mm -hmm. actually don't happen. No. And, yeah. and there's a lot of uh, fabrication that happens mm -hmm. to try and sensationalize this issue. So mm -hmm. I hope we can have uh, factual conversations mm -hmm. around this. And at the same time, we can honor everyone's belief, mm -hmm. uh, but, we, but we need to have good facts out there that uh, make sure that the, the debate is well informed. Mm -hmm. yeah. So for me, it's really about a right um, to parent or not parent, Yeah. right? And so that means that, yes, I have a right to an abortion, and that is incredible and wonderful and beautiful, and I am so grateful for that. Yeah. Yeah. And we're also supporting people who want to parent, yeah. and that we are providing a real social yeah. safety net for people who want to parent, and that we are a community that supports people who want to parent, right? That is um, another huge piece of this. Yeah, yeah. If, if we're going to have children, mm -hmm. we want to make sure that that we're supporting them mm -hmm. that uh, throughout their lifetime, that we are actually a family-friendly culture yes. that supports families mm -hmm. you know, in, yeah. in real terms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we're all the better for that. Mm -hmm. um, are there things that uh, you're looking forward to that you didn't have happen this year, uh, things that are just coming up for the next session? Um, so. There's a few little things that um, my committee left a lot of things in committee when we, in conference committee when we adjourned, mm -hmm. and they were steps from being finished. So yeah. I'm looking forward to getting back. And um, we have a bill that's really inches from being resolved with the Senate that will allow the attorney general to pursue cases of misclassification of employees. Mm -hmm. And what can you explain that? I, for, absolutely, sure. absolutely. So. Workers' rights are only useful if someone is legally a worker, right? Mm -hmm. So someone has to be an employee to get unemployment and workers' comp and um, be productive by the minimum wage and a whole bunch of things and get sort of the full tax benefits mm -hmm. of the earned income tax credit. A lot of our economies, a lot of the protections for workers are based on someone being classified as a worker. And Vermont, more than most states actually, has fairly major misclassification issues, mm -hmm. meaning people are considered contractors when they should be considered workers yeah. or employees. And for a wide variety of reasons, um, a lot of it just being the scarcity of funding in state government, um, 
we haven't been doing everything we could to change that, to change that culturally, to really make sure that employers know about this and employees know about this, and to for folks who are really intentionally stepping outside the law to make sure that there are penalties. Mm -hmm. And so this is an opportunity to really bring a much higher profile to that work, and I'm really excited about that, even though it's pretty geeky. Yeah. Um, similarly, I'm really excited about a law around um, non-compete clauses. Can you say more than yeah. that? Yeah, so um, employers often have new employees sign a non-compete clause in their contracts when they start working. Mm -hmm. And that's happening with even low-wage workers even, like some fast food chains are having people sign non-compete clauses. Which means if you're It means if you leave, then you can't work in that same field again for five, 10, yeah. sometimes even forever. And especially in these small communities with a limited number of job opportunities, it means that people often have to leave the state to find other work, yeah. which is a terrible sort of crush on our community and our community's development. Mm -hmm. And so this says that you can only use these particular group of laws in really extreme situations where it's absolutely needed to protect the trade secrets mm -hmm. or the um, customer list or yeah. something like that of an employer. So I'm excited about that one. Yeah. Also like deep in the economic development trenches. Yeah. And then big picture, I'm really excited about the minimum wage yeah. that came to my committee for a brief amount of time. And um, there was two studies that were built into it that did not pass this session. I think there were really important studies. One of them was about farm workers, and another one was about tipped wages. Yep. And so um, Leg Council, Legislative Council is doing studies um, for me and another one of my community members Great. over the summer about that. So I'm yeah. looking forward to reading those. Because yep. I think that's a, tipped workers are particularly, tipped workers and farm workers are two of the most vulnerable populations in our economy. Mm -hmm. So subject to um, sexual harassment and um, pay evasion and you know yeah. wage and hour constraints. So excited about that. Yep. And then what else? Um, housing. Yep. I want to tackle housing a little more than I have. Yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's across the board. It's one of those things that we need to look at and mm -hmm. be intentional. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Well, uh, I want to thank you for taking the time here. Mm -hmm. um, I want to say it's been a pleasure working with you. Uh, you've been a, a, a great and productive contributor to our delegation, and I think we work well as a delegation together and keep each other informed and work together. So it's been great to work with you this year. You too, Mike. Thanks. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. And, and thanks again to the people here at BCTV. Uh, we mentioned the last show we had that we want to be working and continue to work to help BCTV because they help us bring our work in Montpelier to you. So thanks again for them and, and let's be supportive as much as we can to BCTV. Um, and throughout this uh, show I think they'll be showing contact information for, for both Emily and I because we want to hear from you. It's not too soon to um, get in touch with us about next session. We, we're open to comments, suggestions, and, and hopes for the future. So um, please feel free to get in touch with us. Thanks again for watching. Bye-bye now. <laughs>